Hey, welcome back to our Fire and Duty Hump Day Hangout and to our show, Issues and Challenges in Today's Fire Service. And we have issues and challenges today uh, with our show. <laughs> I'll get to it in a second. Uh, I'm Chief Rick Lasky, along with my good buddy, Chief Scott Thompson from the Colony Fire Department, a happening place in Texas. Um, our, our, our Hump Day partner and co-host, uh, Assistant Chief Terry McGrath, uh, who just started a new job with the, uh, we see Scott, that would be TFS and um, TFS Teaks and Tiffness, right? The combination now. Uh, great position for Terry and a better position for the state of Texas for what they do, mutual aid for all hazards and wildland. Not just wildland, but all hazards. Terry is awesome. It's a perfect position for him. Um uh, Chief Salka is going to try. Uh, he went to a funeral of a retired FDMI member, a friend of his today, so he was going to try and make it back on time. We lost Scott a little while ago, right before, right like two minutes before we went live. He lost power and um, had to run outside and, and, oh, and kick the and kick the gerbils to get him going again on the tube, the hamsters. <laughs> I'm, on guys, my uh, I'm on my phone. Can you hear me? Yeah, a little scratchy, but we're good. We're good. All right, I'm trying to get back on. Sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right. But hey, well, you covered for. Remember the one time I lost power here, and you had to finish the whole. I, I was like, well, that's it. I mean, it 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 happens. I was explaining to Mark, our producer, sometimes doing a live show. How many times, you know, John's like, I got to go to structure fire. Well, beep, he pops off. I'm like, beep, beep pops off, and you're like, well, okay. So, uh, but again, welcome to our show. Um, as a reminder, if you have any questions, uh, take a ride over to uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, and send them our way. Uh, our producer, Mark, can grab them. Uh, make sure you to add, add hashtag FE talk. Um, today, our topic is all things FDIC. Uh, but before we get into that, um, uh, as you can see, I'm not in my usual office. Um, I'm not in my usual, my usual deal here. Um, I'm sitting in uh, what used to be our kitchen. It is now like boxes. We're getting ready to move. On uh, the movers are coming Saturday. We're moving to Estes Park, Colorado. Uh, we start my new job as fire chief with Estes Valley Fire Protection District uh, next week, and we are excited. And Scott, you and I both know how important it is to have a great team, to have a great staff. I tease you all the time, but I'm serious when I tease you that I know very few fire chiefs that brag about their people as much as you do. Um, whether we're on the air or especially off the air, you're always just, I mean, you're, you brag about your staff, you brag about the town, the, what's going on in the colony, and you brag about your guys all the time, their aggressiveness, their passion for the job. And, and we all know no place is perfect. We all have our challenges, but good God, you've got a great group there, buddy. Really blessed, Rick. You know, it takes a while to build the team. As you know, you got to wait for some to leave and the new ones to come in. But, uh, man, I'm blessed. I, I couldn't ask for a, a better group. Uh, like like we used to say, all I do is sit in the office and watch a ceiling fan go around and, and uh, tell them <laughs> yes when they ask me. Spin, spin around yeah. spin around in circles. Isn't that the truth? And you and I were together a long time, man. We were a long time in Louisville, and uh, we, we did a lot of great things. But uh, I'm, I'm so blessed. I was, uh, oh, it was uh, it, it was awesome. We did, we did. If I don't know, uh, I don't know what signal you're getting on your phone. Um, if you got enough bars or whatever, you may have to prop it up or something. I don't know. It's it's uh, kind of a little weak once in a while, but I got gotcha. you. Uh, but I've, I've got, I was telling you, Scott, um, oh, I think that, that fixed it. Let me hear you. Let me hear you, my brother. Oh, much That's better. One, two, three. Oh, okay. A lot better. Cool. So Erica, right. my chief of staff, was recognized by the Chamber of Commerce in, this month for uh, this one, one of their selections for Women of Impact uh, for International, you know, uh, Women's uh, Day. And just, uh, uh, she's, she's, she's. Good God! What a, I, a godsend! You know what I'm talking about. She's just, she's just freaking incredible. Um, yeah, she's absolutely incredible. And I got Polly Capo, uh, who was just on the weekly scrap with our, with our good uh, buddy Curly Moore. Uh, Paulie's the ops chief, and uh, 
over trading uh, as well as our trading captain, and they do some great things we'll talk about. Uh, John, our, our support services chief, is he's like my go-to because he's been there so long in that town. I mean, you talk about having a resource that's absolutely valuable. That's that's John. Um, Stacy is probably one of the most passionate people I've met when it comes to public education and fire prevention. Marinda's a minister assistant who's phenomenal. Wesley's our, our wild mitigation coordinator. Uh, he's got a ton of experience. Chris is the captain over training and, and the volunteers and Scott, they gave him, they surprised him at the awards banquet. They gave him a, I believe it's called the heart of the fire department award. Surprise him. The volunteers came up with their own award for him. And he, wow. he man, he has pointed when you talked about how much he cares about the volunteer firefighters there, by the way, our roster, 30% female, and they rock it, dude. They absolutely rock it. Uh, Paul and Chris, the training class that they put on there at their regional training academy, the, the classes fill up uh, like for the whole year. I mean, they've got, you know, fourth century, they got an EV class coming up. They do their fire academies, everything else, live burns, uh, ventilation, writ stuff. Uh, I got a great board. I got great bosses to work for. A great, bo I'll say this if anybody's listening, Come on out for a visit. Just Google Estes Park, Colorado. And then, more importantly, Google the Estes Park Fire Protection. I'm sorry, Estes Valley. I almost said Estes Park. Uh, those are my allergies. Estes Valley Fire Protection District's website. But uh, show us some love. Go like our Facebook page and our, our, our Twitter account uh, if you get a chance. Um, but, We're fortunate, uh, Rick. You know, I know personally how much you love training. They're fortunate. Uh, to get a boss in that's going to support their training. So it sounds like you got a great, great group ready to get, hit the ground running, I'm sure. Well, you and I, Scott, are cut from the same cloth. You know, we both – one of the things um, that I love about you and about Terry and about John, the group we run with, our friends, Eddie Buchanan and everybody else, is the people we run with, Scott, love the job so much you can't help but admire them. Their, their passion for the job, their passion for their people um, – you and I, selfishly, I talk about you and I, you and I, and I, can, I think I can speak for you, have no patience. I mean, no patience for people who don't love this job. If you don't love this job, we'll put up with you, but I've got no use for you. If you don't love me to fight for little boys and girls want to be you, right? And if you don't love this job, I, I, I don't know. I mean, let's start with that real quick before we get to the FDIC stuff. Your thoughts, not in the county, but your thoughts on people you run into that, you could just tell don't love they're just in it for the t-shirt or the paycheck. They're a volley just there for the t-shirt or they're a career guy just there for the paycheck. Your thoughts on your feelings about them. You know, Rick, that was probably one of the hardest things I had to learn as a chief is that not everybody's going to have the same level of passion that I, I do that you, you know, you do. And so you can turn that down a notch, but. Uh, Growing adults. Um, you know, that, that have responsibility, they've accepted this job, they take the pay or the privilege if you're a volunteer, and yet they don't give anything back. And, you know, I always say, I wonder what they tell their kids in the morning when they go off to school. Listen, I want you to sleep as much as you can, eat as much as you can every time you teach <laughs> something. I want you to whine as much as you can, and we'll talk about it tonight at dinner. You know, they would never do that. But, man, for the life of me, you know, Garrett Rice has a saying, we ruin we. And you allow a few of those knuckleheads to to get into the uh, organization and, and just start doing their damage. And, and it can do a lot of harm. But, yeah, I, I don't get it. I, I uh, They're going to have a whole great career passing by, and, and they're going to retire, and they're going to wish they did things a little differently. Oh, and we get, first of all, we got to get your boys back on their show because they're all about <laughs> passion, obviously. But, you know, two great firefighters. But, I mean, uh, and, and, but you're right. I just – I don't get it. I don't understand how you could be, first of all, be a career firefighter and it's just a job to you. And you know how much both of us love our volunteers, absolutely love yeah. our volunteer firefighters. But when you get one or two of them that have their agendas kind of pushing what, you know, I'm saying, you know where I'm going. It's like, you want, you want to go. So why are you here? You're not going to contribute. You don't do this. You don't do that. Whatever, you know, Look, I love everybody's opinions. I love everybody's input. You know that we're both very flexible, open-minded, approachable yeah, people. Yeah. But you don't work against you know the the common good of the department or what everybody's working for. And 
like we talked about, those are like the bosses um, that bitch down, right? You know, we've right. talked about this all the time. If you're a boss and you bitch down to your people, then you're the cancer. If you're a senior firefighter and you bitch down to your people, you're the problem. You're you know, the you problem. Become, yeah, you become the kind of firefighter or officer that you used to hate working for. And they don't even realize this guy. I was just with a guy and I'm like, this guy wouldn't stop bitching about his place. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's one thing they come up and ask you for advice. Another thing I'm like, you almost want to record him and go, if you heard what you were saying, would you be happy with what you're saying about your own department? You know, I mean, you know, be constructive, be proactive, be part of, you know, right. Be part of the team, not part of the furniture, that whole thing. But, uh, uh, they but get a victim you know, mentality, man, and they do everything they can to, to make this great thing miserable and take everybody down with them. And I, I, I just don't get it. Oh, I don't either. But, 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 you and I have talked about this before. There's just under 40,000 fire departments in the United States. And there's about that. I can't even make my fingers close enough. That many that have those attitude. Right. That means there's there out of the 1.2-ish million firefighters, there's a gazillion of them that are just like you and I. I told you, we, we my, my volunteers, you know, I, I get, I t every time I talk to one, um, everybody I've talked to so far is like a crazy nut job about the fire service. I'm serious. I haven't found it. I, everyone, I've, everyone I've had a conversation with Scott so far, they're not just like, well, welcome, Chief. We're glad you're here. They are crazy nut jobs in Estes and the Estes Valley Fire about what they do, and I can't wait to work with them. That's what they are. But That's hey, awesome. let's talk FDIC, buddy. Let's All talk. Right. So let me ask you this: you, Do you remember your first FDIC? Do you remember what year it was? Or well, Rick, I, I do, and and you know you may not realize this, but you brought me to my first FDIC. So Is that your first one? Yeah, I went to work for you in two thousand two. And so that was my, my first FDIC. And, uh, you know, I, I talked a little bit about this in the keynote, but it was kind of the, the worst and best experience because that was the first FDIC after 9-11. And, and so, you know, it was, you know, I, we got off the plane together and I think we saw Captain Mike Dugan right there in the airport, you know, the stories and the hugs and all that. And of course, I was just sitting back watching, but, uh, yeah, I'll never forget that. But yeah, that was my first. You brought me in um, as your training chief, and uh, we did the Saving Our Own Get Out Alive program. We had a couple others from Louisville, but yeah, you you brought me to my first FDIC. Well, do you remember that too, Scott? You know, it was right after nine eleven. Obviously, you know, I lost you lost friends. I lost forty eight friends, eleven mentors on that day. But Billy McGinn, one of our instructors that John brought with him, was killed. He was on AT squad with Andy Fredericks, lieutenant. And then we had Mechel, uh, you know, uh, uh, back from, from Florida as two of our instructors. And we took that memorial picture that we all have with in memory of behind uh, Clear Street, behind the vacant town uh, apartment buildings we were training in. Billy McGinn, and Dana lost, Hannon, that whole whole group. And, uh, yeah. But we lost cool. them. They got, they remember they went back home to Florida and tragically we lost them in the training burn, burn yeah. you know, and they do a memorial, the Mechel yeah. memorial down there all the time. And, uh, uh, you, just, you know what? You just don't know. But, but I mean, so I remember my first FDIC before I was even teaching was like it was it was like 1990. But I have to laugh when you say it was back in 2002. I had a I had a young guy the other day tell me, you know, he says this guy he goes, well, back in 21. He goes, I go, like 1921 or 2021. What is? You realize it's 20 plus years ago. It's crazy. Well, when he said back in 21, I'm like, okay, yeah. but back in the day, 2002 was a career away for people. But yeah. I mean, just, and you know, this it's FDIC's Disney world for firefighters. I yeah. mean, just, you know, I, I used to tell people I got to wear rubber underwear when I'm there. Cause I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm so excited, you know, um, I'm like a little puppy that can't control his excitement. Um, yeah. What was it like walking the hallway? I mean, teaching was one thing, you know, because you were awesome. You, there, there was absolutely no doubt about your capabilities. And well, thank you. We always call the big show. It's the biggest conference in the world. We've got to be very picky. You know this over the years, who we let teach there because they can ruin your program in a heartbeat. And I was excited to have you there. Uh, but 
So it's one thing teaching, what, 270, 280 students a day, Monday, Tuesday, hot. But to walk the hallways, talk about that, like your first opening ceremonies. Oh, uh, bigger bigger than life. I mean, it's it's just such a, a massive scale. And, and you know, you're, you're seeing or meeting all your, your icons, these people that you've read about and heard about. And, oh, there's Alan Brunacini over there. There's Gordon Graham over there. There's John Norman over So that's part what, of it. And what are they doing? They're stopping and talking yeah. to the Rick Laskies and Scott Thompsons like we've known them for like 25 years. Absolutely. And, and then you go in the exhibits and you're just like, it's, it's just words. Words don't describe it. You know, everybody has four or five or six defining moments in a fire service career. We all have those. And, and FDIC is absolutely in my top three of, of game changers that have totally changed how I, I look at the fire service. You know, a lot of my good friends today, you, Mike Arico, Tommy Shavino, when he was alive, um, you know, we're all that I kept in touch with Donnie Habe. You know, I, I we went up to his retirement, uh, so I still keep in touch today with with all those guys, Jay, Jay Coon, or you know, so it's a lifetime of an experience. Just uh, well, yeah, it grew from FDIC in Indianapolis that we ended with FDIC West for a lot of years, yeah, FDIC yeah. East. And it expanded. Everybody, we got to teach with our good friend Lisa, Lisa Reed up from Vaughn, Canada. She retired with another phenomenal firefighter. Lisa, good God, is she? Is she like? Uh, she's a she's a combination. Everything from I mean, she's like RoboCop as a firefighter. She's just she just remember that these guys would be like, uh, uh, I'm a, I need Gatorade. She's doing. Yeah. 16 evolutions a day as demonstrations. And some guys go, I'm tired. I'm like, and she'd look at him like, right. She'd stand there and go. Really? really? Yeah. You know? And I think she like set some records in the combat challenge. I know she yeah. can pay, competed in that. She was, she was, yeah, she was a uh, national women's was, combat yeah. challenge champion. Yeah. yeah. We, so we, we stole her. We stole her right, right into our program. So, so it's cool. You walk in opening ceremonies, you're in there. And it's 2024. And let me see. 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 Do you know who's doing the keynote on Wednesday this year? Do you know yeah, who's doing, yeah. this year? Who's doing truly, the keynote on Wednesday? Truly honored, Rick. Uh, it's, I, still, I, I still can't believe it. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, that that was an easy suggestion at the advisory board meeting, buddy. I'm telling you. You know. Well, you know, it was kind of an up and down. You remember we were on the show, and Bobby offered it to me. And then, of course, what happened happened. So then I thought I was doing it. Then I'm not doing it. And, of course, David wanted to uh, give the advisory board some say in that. And, you know, I know you're a big part of that. But, you know, I, I remember every year sitting um, out there watching all of you that have been on that stage. And, and you know, it's 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 so sobering to think, hey, you've been given this platform. You've been given 20 minutes. 5,000 people. 5,000 people, buddy. But to get, to get to share your message with the American Fire Service and and you know it just uh, just unbelievable. I still pinch myself and I'm going, man, I, I can't believe that that I'm I'm given this opportunity. But uh, oh, just, I'm, I'm, I'm so minute, Thursday. I'm so excited for you, and I'm I, I don't know who I'm more excited for. I don't know if I'm more excited for my friend Scott oh. Thompson or or the guys and gals in the audience and those watching from because there's five thousand in the audience and it's televised. Um, you know, I remember the first time I walked on that stage was 1996. Wow. And Leo Stapleton, the former commissioner from Boston, what a legend. He died, he was 92. He came over to me backstage, Scott. He goes, hey, Rick, you look like you're a little bit nervous. I said, she, I'm just, he goes, all right, first thing you do, go over there and empty your stomach contents in the garbage can. <laughs> he goes, is your, is your family out there, your wife out there? I said, yeah, don't look at her. She's going to make you cry. Don't look at her. He goes, and, and 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 don't really look down at anybody right in front. He goes, because there's going to be a guy like this. He's going to be going, and yeah. you're going to think he's pissed at what you're saying. He's not pissed. He's got gas. He's got <laughs> gas. He, well, he was not drinking all night. He goes, just, he goes, be yourself. And he, oh, and then I'll I tell you what, after the pride and ownership, which was the biggie, because, you know, you're supposed to use, they want you to use the teleprompters. And I read the first three lines of the teleprompters. Then I walked away. And thank God they filmed it because I had no idea what the hell I said when I was done. I just got out of rows yelling, screaming, and I come off stage and Diane's like this. Instead of saying great job, she goes, Okay, you have to sit down, and write a letter of apology to Walmart and to Kmart. <laughs> I guess I said something about them. But anyway, but then I went out to FDIC Westcott, 
to do Pride Noor Shabbat there. And, 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 you know, to, and this is before 9 11 and all that. And I get out there and I'm doing my thing and I look out in the front row and there's Tom Brennan, our idol, right? Chief Tom. And I looked and I vapor locked. I looked out and I went and I couldn't talk. And I'll never forget, he did this simple thing, Scott. He went like this. He went, he went, he went like this. He looked at me, he gave that look, he went, he went, hit his heart. He goes, Wow. And I'm like, Tom Brennan just hit his heart like to the heart. And I was that's on FDIC, fire. Though. That's FDIC, right? And that's why your friends and me and John Salk and I were going to be up there in front yeah. supporting our friend. Not that you need it. It's, I can't wait. I just can't I'll wait. It. Well, I'm excited. You already have the best selling book, The Functional Fire Company, you know, so yeah, yeah, that. But, but yeah, you, so started, you started this whole journey for me, you know, and, and, you know, Bobby let me do so much. One, you know, one of the other coolest things I got to, I got to be part of the pipes and drums for four or five years yeah. when we had the band in Louisville and I uh, got to play with Gary Apple and Damian Roberts. And I'll tell you that that's a whole nother underworld at FDIC. You run with the pipes <laughs> and drums. Underworld man. is right. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, just so many cool things with, with all the experiences. After all, after the evenings, after all the pub calls, you end up having to go to rehab for a while just to clean oh up a little bit. But, Everybody but what was it, it was so much fun to be able to do that and and see that side of it. Just a lot of oh, a lot of cool oh. experiences. It's just fun. I saw Eddie Buchanan and John Buckman, the other guys, the three of them. They got their their book out, and yeah. I remember Eddie the same thing. I we went and taught Saving Rome. Me Curtis and set. We went out to Hanover County, and I'm like. How do you do this? How do you train 500 volunteers and 250 career guys to keep it all? And he and Greg Martin were both lieutenants. Remember, I said, you guys need to come, come, you know, you need to write an article. He's like, oh, nobody wants to hear from. I go, they do. There's a whole fire service out there. You know, not everybody, God bless, for the FDY in Chicago and L.A. And they want to hear from you. So I helped them with fax machines. Remember, back and forth with the article. Fax this, fax that. Right, get some charts. Get this. We got them published. I go, okay, good. Now you're going to put an FDIC to teach the program because we always look for, we'll talk about this a little bit later, where I know what I look for when I'm reviewing calls for papers. If you say it was based on article published on fire engineering, whether the web or the magazine, doesn't matter, you go right to the top of the list if you're already published for us. And then he did that. And I go, okay, good. Now you're going to come teach. You and Greg come teach with us at FDIC and to get you know the safety and survival program, get out alive and save your own. And, and it just kept growing. I go, okay, now you can sit down and talk with Mark. You're going to do a book. And it's like Paul Combs. We love Paul Combs. And he was in my class after Pride. He was, and I walked over. I go, did you just draw that? And I had the picture. It was a black and white drawing. And a firefighter has his, his ass is smarting with all the, like, he just got kicked in the ass. And he turned <laughs> to his buddy and says, I just got out of Alaska's class. That was the best kick in the ass I've ever had. And I'm like, you need to do that. You need to do that for the magazine. Your artwork's going to save lives. And it just, it's so much fun because, Scott, someone gave me the chance. Bill Manning, Peter Hodge called me. Uh, in, uh, and, you know, I've been on the advisory board since, since, they, since the magazine bought it in 95. I've been on the FDIC advisory board since then. But he, Peter Hodge called me. He was running the time. He said, hey, Billy wants you to know if you do the opening keynote in Indy. And I said, well, sure, I'm, I'm a good soldier. What's he been doing on it? You know, Pete talking from Jersey because people in New Jersey are the only ones that have accents. And he said, he wants you to do that thing you do. I said, what thing? He goes, you know that thing? I go, what are you talking about? He goes, you know hear a soapbox, you bitch about chiefs, don't care about the guys, the country officers, you're lazy, don't train your people, career guys just for a paycheck, and volunteers just for the T-shirt. I go, Pete, they don't want to hear an Italian Polak from Chicago get up there. But he goes, no, we need it. We lost our total. So that was the whole, and I was like, Okay, you, they, you know, I, I guess if you want me to walk out there and talk, never knowing the impact. And then I had already had the article series on the Save and Rome program and everything else. And it's just amazing what that conference can, can do for you. Um, it's just so to let, to, we're talking about the FDI experience, Scott, and you know this as I know it, and all our friends know it. Incredible classrooms. The instructors there are phenomenal. Um, you know, uh, rarely do we have a dud, but once in a while somebody sneaks in. They give you a proposal. You go, he looks good, and they don't teach that topic. Most of them are phenomenal. Clients. In fact, the biggest complaint we have got as advisory board members, too much good stuff to choose from. 
I, I have three classes at every time, so I can't, I'm having to pick. So what we tell people what? You have three guys to look at. You go to one, Scott. I'll go to one, or yeah. you go to another. One, and we get back and we talk about it. But, but so the experience in the classrooms, the experience of the cutting edge on the exhibit floor, the hallways. Talk about the experiences in the restaurants, the bars, and the hotel lobbies, because I think they're phenomenal. I think some of the best classrooms are taught when guys get talking at the bar or at the restaurant or in the hall. How many times have we sat in the lobby of a hotel for a whole night just talking shop? Oh, it, it, it's everywhere. Indianapolis is FDIC for that week, and you can't, even if you wanted to, you can't escape it. And every place you go into, rather it's it's going in for a cocktail before you go out, you see somebody you know, you haven't seen in a while, you start the conversation, and pretty soon you look up and you're two hours past your dinner appointment, and you know you, there's a crowd around you. But my gosh, that's that's every morning, noon, and, and night. Uh, you oh. know, you're standing in line at the Starbucks in the in the W to get your get your coffee, and you have those conversations. But it's just so alive, and like I say, you can't. You can't avoid FDIC in Indianapolis during that week. It's everywhere. It's it's well, and, and down they, the already, street. they already bother Scott Thompson now in the hallways. <laughs> I, mean, I can't wait to see after your keynote. I'm not there yet. I'm First not of all, there. I ain't walking with you nowhere because I'll never get there because it's going to be oh. cheap tops and great talk, cheap tops. And cheap. It, it's going to be, you know, you're going to need a handle like Bobby oh. needed him. a handle I to get to. Oh, it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. Oh, no. Yeah. Thank so, I mean, boss. how about the street corners? But see, that's guys taught us. But, but the Bruno and Brennan Unplugged series we had for the longest time that we lost Tommy. It was Bruno and friends, and it was Bruno and, and, and John Norman. Then we lost Bruno and Bob. But and then we did After Oz for a little bit. But that started, Scott. I don't know if you remember how that started. The very first year at FDIC, up at Fire and Jimmy's Hospitality Room. They have some, you know, food up there and a few drinks, and you know, and, and, you know, I, don't, I mean, some of us don't drink, but some do. And, and and Bruno was having a little bit of wine and Tom, and they're sitting there, East versus West, and they started talking at about five o'clock, and at midnight, it, it was what people were sitting on the floor. They were raptors. People had came, went to dinner, and came back, and they were still talking. And the next That's advisory board, oh. The next advisor will go, we need to do that. We need to put them on the stage. And everybody thought it would be like Geraldo, throwing chairs and all that stuff. Those two guys loved each other. You talk in New York City and Phoenix, Alan Brunicini and Tom Brennan, a, a lot of different viewpoints, but a lot the same. And I remember, Scott, years later, Bobby said, if you could say something, you know, about, about Tommy, you know, Alan and Alan, you know, if you at the time, if you could say something about, about Alan, you know, and Tom, you know, Alan, you could say something about Tommy. And Alan Brunacini leaned over and 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 tapped on Tom's hand and said, I, I wish I could have rode behind him. I wish I could have been one of his firefighters. And Tom Brennan reached over and said, I wish I could have worked for Alan. And they kind of reached over these older gentlemen that are just icons, and they when he they kind of just very, you know, it was a touch on the hand. I went, and I got emotional. I'm like, these are two of my idols sitting on a big stage. And what a moment. What? And there was no fighting because, look, they would say two different things. Al would be like, be nice, clean up after yourself. And Tom said, break some windows, a bunch of hole in the roof. You know. <laughs> but, but they but didn't look take shit. Gotten us. Look at where those two have gotten us oh. and the mindset and, and just – you know, that's that's what has made the American Fire Service what it is. Well, and I always called, you know me, Bruno was always my godfather. I called my surrogate godfather. I, it's how I never called him Bruno. I never called James. I'd be, hello, hello, godfather. I just, he, you know, everything he did, Tommy did. Bobby's another one. God bless God, Bobby. I, you know, I was very blessed to be with him right up 12 hours before. We were teaching yeah. Hawaii together. But he had to have a handler, Scott, because he would stop and talk to anybody. J Jimmy Spears, one of our oh, talk to everybody. Oh, Jimmy Jimmy Spears, one of our guys from Wichita West. You know, Jimmy's a, he's my vet for our dog. Jimmy's a freaking incredible. He was there for hot waiting. You know, they're all staged in the hallway waiting a bus. And Bobby's walking. He comes over and he goes. Jimmy looks up and there he's on his phone. Bobby goes, "Hey, where are you from?" He goes, "Oh, Wichita West, Texas." He goes, "Wichita West, 
you tell Lasky he's not a pimple on a real firefighter's ass. And Jimmy goes, he didn't know what to say. Bobby goes, Rick, <laughs> Rick, Rick, Ricky's my best friend. I'm joking. I mean, it was like, but but Bobby used to have to get, remember, he used to have to get drug away from people to oh, yeah. make his next appointment. Yeah. It, you know, and that and it didn't matter if you were the first time, the youngest person there, the first time Bobby made you feel special and important, it would take the time to talk to you. Oh, and that's what I, that you know. You and I do that, and 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 we're nobody special. We're just Scott and Rick, you know. But man, when when students come up or when young fivers come up and say, "Hey, Chief Thompson, oh my God, I got your book," and this is that you and and when they say little things, Scott, like because I've heard them, you know, when they come up to you and they say, "You changed my life," you change and you, and, you, and you what do you do? You do the same thing. You, you like a lot of us go. Well, you know, I just try to. Give some lessons off of some of the mistakes I made, and some of the lessons I learned, or whatever, from the heart. But yes. God, I mean, when when you get rid of being macho for a moment, that's a pretty cool feeling to know you've impacted someone's life, like they did to us years ago. Yeah, you know, the, it forward. It forward. Yeah. yeah. So but and they, so, they, so they, like, they pay this money. A lot of them, you know, pay money to go, and this may be the only training they get during the year, and so. You know, I think as instructors, as 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 authors, you know, that's that's part of the responsibility is to connect to those people and, and spend the time. And not because we're any better, any different. It's just that they've made a huge commitment and, and we should be there to help make the experience the absolute best that it can be because they may not get to go back again. Who knows? Exactly. And Pauly Capo taught for years at FDIC and, um, you know, the, the, what he does as my ops chief with Chris, our training captain, SS Valley, the, the, the regional fire academy that they run there is phenomenal. I mean, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, absolutely phenomenal how quick the classes fill up and the types of class, the live burns, the four other different stuff they do there. But you go to FDIC and, and, you, and it's so hard because you're only there in the blink of an eye, it's over. And you're right. What is it, uh, Scott? Uh, the Indy 500, the Brickyard, and it was the final four. And FDIC, there was like the top four events. When you get off the plane, and you're walking up the jet bridge, and there's signs on the floor you're walking over saying, Welcome to FDIC. And the overpass is that you know a whole some, city. So talk about no, I want to I want to hit you for a couple more things. Your experience. I remember my first experience walking into the speaker ready room, either before or after doing a presentation. Usually before you're like nervous, not paying. After you walk in. And I looked around at those tables, and good God, it's like the who's who of the fire service. And I was the first time I did that, you know, like I said, I, I started teaching there in 93. But when they did a speaker, and I, I, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was big time intimidated. I'm like, I sat in the corner. I, I still am. You walk in there and you look around and, you know, I remember this last time, uh, Butch, Butch Cobb was in there, and I didn't know him real well, but sat down with him. We talked for two hours, and, uh, you know, just, just – oh, it's it's it's, it's extremely uh, intimidating. And, it, it, you know, Kevin Shea's back there handing out signs like, you know, he <laughs> – you would think he was the higher help because he's a quiet gentleman, and, and, and you just oh. – every year it's, it's just a different storyline. Well, I got a funny Kevin Smith story. So Jimmy – Jimmy Spears, I just talked about Jimmy, he goes to FDIC every year. So Jim uh, has, has been one of the – he and his wife are two of the most respected veterinarians in all North Texas. He's an AM grad. He and his wife are AM grads. Uh, grads. Right. All right. Yeah. Really like that. His dad, his dad created the Spears Business School, one of the most recognized business schools in the world, out of wow. OSU, Oklahoma State, and – uh, uh, SMU, and so if you Google it, it's unbelievable. Jimmy is one of the most humblest dudes, one of the most down to earth dudes you'll meet. He can't get enough classes, enough training. So here's this veterinarian from Texas that's just so respected. So I go, I I want to introduce him. You know how I used to introduce all our guys. Remember what you remember? You and I taking all those guys and introduce them. Like yep. we all they're all wearing Paul Conway helmets and front pieces. Oh, come here. <laughs> nice for a second. Hey Paul, this is my friend Paul Conway. Oh, 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 here's my friend. Here's my friend. You know, and I don't think, but you know, so, so, so that that being said, you know, uh, you, you think about that, and you go, okay, so, so, you know, who who are we, who are we going to meet now? So Kevin, I, I want Jimmy to meet Kevin because Kevin is one of my heroes, and he is right, a gentleman, quiet, yep. 
I'll just do it. But everybody that knows history knows Kevin from doing the second rope rescue on the same rope down on Broadway. Phenomenal video. Google it, folks. Go to YouTube. Kevin Shea's rope rescue is un by God believable. They were filming an episode with uh, is it Joe Walsh, uh, Phil Walsh, the guy from uh, America's Most Wanted. Walsh? Walsh? Walsh. Walsh. Yeah, he was yeah. trying to do an episode called Firehouse, like cops, you know. And they were filming live when that happened. It's all Patty Brown who was the lieutenant on Rescue One that day. And Ray McCormick was was, was McCormick on the, was set there. the rescue. Patty Barb. Yeah, there was a bunch of them. So I wanted yeah. Jimmy to meet him. I wanted to be in the speaker ready room. So Kevin walks in. I go, hey, Kevin, I got one of my guys here. He's a veterinarian. All that stuff. And we're talking. He goes, does he do like large? I go, yeah, he does everything. He goes, well, I'd love to ask him a question about my goats. You know, you know, Kevin's <laughs> up in Montana. I go, well, yeah. He goes, so Kevin goes, I go, Kevin, I'm going to have him come in. He goes, no, no, no. I don't want to bother him. He's, 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 he's experiencing FDIC. I don't want to. I go, Kevin, he's a cool <laughs> dude. I go to Jimmy. Jimmy, I want you to be Kevin, you know, Kevin Shea. He goes, he goes, he goes, oh, Chief, I don't want to bother him. He's probably working at FDIC. I don't want to be like that. So here's these two gentlemen that are both going, oh, I don't want to. And I finally oh, said, yeah. Jimmy, come here for a second. I want you to come here, sit down at this table, have coffee with me. Oh, Kevin, come here. He's got goats. He's got questions. You're a vet. You're my guy. <laughs> you talk. And they became friends. And they're like, you know, they became friends. And, and Kevin, and so they're, they're sitting there talking, talking goats and care and food and shots and whatever the hell they're talking. I don't know. Jimmy takes care of our dog. Our dog's alive because of Jimmy. But oh, it was just such that's a crazy. cool scenario. So, all right, book booth. First time signing books. The book booth. The book booth's amazing, isn't it? Oh, the absolutely. Book. And, uh, you know, used to walk by it and see, you know, all the, all the names we talked about. And, and I'll be honest with you, you know, Rick, I, uh, I thought about when I was writing the book, you know, maybe, you know, because self-publishing is a thing now. But I wanted it to go through the editorial process, number one, and make sure it was worthy. But also to, to sit up there and, and share that. That's another one of those things. You think of all the people that have sat at those tables before who are going to in the future, the ones that are sharing their thoughts. And it's it's just all kind of part of the ritual and the, the routines there. And it is it's very special, you know, when you, you sign up and you say, OK, who's before me? Who's after me? Because um, you have quality conversation. You know, I uh, I sat there last year and had a long talk with Dennis Compton. I haven't talked to him in a while. Well, and, and, another and, you know, legend. Yeah, you know, Billy Goldfeder, and, and always I try to get before or after you and John are during the same time so we can, yeah, so it's it's just another part of the, the ritual that makes FDIC what it is, you know. I, I It almost frightens me to think had I not gone through uh, that route of publishing it and missing that experience, but, but that's all. And the conversations you have, you know, these people come up and ask you a question and you'll spend 30 or 40 minutes talking and then, you're signing times up. You go over, sit on the couches over there, and you talk for another hour. Oh, and, and you mentioned you know a couple of legends. And what's funny is the people we call legends are such cool dudes and dudettes. They actually get angry if you call them legends because they're like, "Stop that! Stop that! I'm just a firefighter." Like you and I say, we're just fire. And I love watching. You're up there signing, and I love because down are off on the side, and you see young firefighters with your book, and they're going. Do you think he'll sign my book? Do you, I'm like, that's what they're there for. Is there a sign? And then, I, you know, how many times you go? I always grab them. I'm signing. I go. They come up all cheap. I go. You got your phone with you? What? Come on, get right here between Chief Salka. Come around the back. Come on, that size booth. Come between me and Chief Salka. Hey, here, come here. Stop for a second. And I remember what that was like, Scott. I remember taking my. I have my pictures with Tom Brennan and Alan Brunacini and Leo Stapleton and John Nor. I have my picture still today on my iPhone. I can show you that I cherish. And I'm like, and it, you know, because so, once in a while you have to lay down the being macho, humble thing and go, you know what? People want to talk to you for a reason and you take a picture, sign a book. But I love watching their response when they get to talk to you. Hey, so lifetime achievement award winner this recipient this year he was supposed to get last year and he was very very gracious when david our boss david rhodes and diane rothschild and the board said can we put it off a year and give it to bobby and bobby's passing steve chikorotis is another gentleman an incredible yep. fireground officer company officer 
firefighter. He's the tech yeah, advisor. Oh, technical editor for uh, for advisor for uh, uh, Chicago Fire and all those shows, backtrack everything. And you, he's another guy. You would just, you're like you're yeah. sitting there talking to him, and you agree. Somebody goes, you know, who you're talking to, right? No, who I don't. That's Chick. That's T. Chick Rollins. You know who you're like. Is that who I've been talking to for this half hour? Who's was asking me about my kids, and my family, and my job. And he's the recipient this year. And I think for our viewers, if you're a Chicago Fire fan, I, I actually can say this because I'll be joining them. Um, there's going to be some of the stars from Chicago Fire in attendance for Chick's Award, man. It's going to be pretty cool. Outstanding. Pretty cool. What, a deserving, what, a, what a great you know, very deserving person to get that, all his contributions over oh. the years. And he's not slowing oh. down at all. That's, that's no, awesome. No, not at all. And then we got the radio booth again. We did it. We used to do the shows upstairs with nobody listened to. And then we did a glass booth last year with the live. And we told him we need to get someone outside with a microphone because people are banging on the glass. I got a question for you. <laughs> you know, and those, th that was a huge success right down there at the, at the intersection. When you first come down the escalators. The big escalators off the main entrance there. Uh, that's going to be things. So, Scott, we got some time left here. Yeah. Let's talk about how to teach at FDIC. We've already talked on shows of how to write articles, and it kind of goes along the same lines. But let's talk about the do's and don'ts, you know, for those that want to teach at FDIC, um, are not sure whether they should or not or whatever. Somebody comes up and they've done it, right? Hey, Chief Thompson, yeah, second, yeah. You know, I've always thought about, I, you know, I've been at the ice and go, man, one day I'd like to teach a class, you know, and they either have a topic or they don't. Somebody comes up at a class or one of your seminars says, Chief, I'd really love to teach at FDIC. What advice do you have for me? What do you tell them? What, is, what does Chief Scott Thompson tell them? Well, you know, Rick, like you, I've been asked that a hundred times, and I don't know if I know the secret sauce because I'm, I'm not on the advisory board, so I'm, I'm on the outside looking in. Which makes it even better. Yeah, you know, but I think you hit on it. You know, you you gotta you gotta have an in depth knowledge of what you're talking about. You know? and and, I, and same as you. And these aren't bad people, but somebody who's been in the fire service seven years and teaching a leadership class, you know, it, it, you gotta have some you gotta have some skin in the game, and you gotta you gotta studied it enough where you remove the biases and you're really looking at it. But that number one, and and stay in your lane of of what your specialty is. But then getting the message out there beforehand, either, uh, you know, uh, through the magazine or, or stuff online and writing those articles and, and, and getting that, your message out there and, and getting feedback. You know, a lot of times I'll write those articles and you'll get feedback and people will tell you, Hey, you know, you need to think about this. So you have time to fine tune it. And then also, I think the last thing is, is teach it some other places. Don't, don't make yeah. FBI be your, your first oh, time yeah. to teach because that's, you know, hugely intimidating, but I would say that I'd say, you know, stay in your lane and teach something that you're passionate about, have some experience with, write some articles about it. So you start to formulate your message in your head and you can articulate it, you know, and, and then, you know, get some feedback, go out there and do it a couple of times. I remember Rick, when I, my, my first time of, of doing anything uh, on the book, I went to Southside Fools in Chicago and, and T McCaslin was sitting in the very front row with his arms <laughs> crossed happy. And uh, I, man, I was like, I and, and and he was very honest with me. And we, we went to the Ronald McDonald house the next day because the fools were doing a deal and he gave me some feedback and it was very, very good feedback. And and so, you know, that, that would be my opinion from the outside looking in. Well, and, and you know, one of the things you remember, cause you're one of my guys, you know, how loyal I'm to one of my guys. So when you came to teach for us at the hands on training, you skipped about three steps and went right to being an instructor where you've seen other guys. I tell the Larry McCormick story, Larry McCormick, you know, Tommy Trevino was his mentor in Oak Lawn. Larry McCormick went from Oak Lawn to FDNY, made a grab and everything else. His wife ended up losing her job and moved back to Chicago. So he ended up with the world. He ended up with the world series ring working for Oak Lawn on the South side of Chicago, went to FDNY. Yeah. Which was the World Series ring, and then he goes back to Chicago and gets and gets, you know, MVP, and he's the, the recipient of Chicago's highest award for valor for saving a firefighter who was on fire. Got the Tom or the uh, Ray Chief Ray Down Courage of Valor Award, and he's one of the most humble dudes. 
And he started as a helper, yeah. getting caught yeah. everybody, yeah. holding ladders, doing stuff. And then, you know, so you right, remember you're sitting there, you're standing there, you go, okay, Larry, you got the next group. What? Come on, step up here. You 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 teach this next set evolution. And all he of a sudden, boom, and then Tommy, it. yeah, Tommy comes up. I think he's ready. So that's the one thing. But you're right with the classes. Now, you know, I've been on the advisory board since they bought it. So I've been reviewing. Oh God, it's 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 a great process, but it's a long process with all the papers. I get all the leadership stuff, the Mayday, the the RIT stuff. I get some truck stuff. I get you know a lot of instant command tactics and strategy, uh, the motivational stuff, and so on and so forth. Um, and I'll tell you, when I look at the papers, when I look at the submissions, I look at the title, like you were talking about. I uh, to you. I look at the title. I go right to their bio, because there's a lot of very passionate people that. Like you say, I've got a firefighter with six years, five years on the job, want to teach a chief officer class or a, a company officer class. And I don't care how much you've been an acting officer. It's a critical role. You ain't an, you ain't an officer yet. You're not a company officer yet. If you've never been a, a chief officer, if you've never been the chief of department, you know this firsthand. You have no idea what goes on in that office. So I would never consider teaching a class I was not extremely well-versed in. So you hit it right in the head. Know your subject backwards and forwards because what did Alan Brunacini used to say? Trying to bullshit a firefighter is like trying to sneak a sunrise past a rooster. You can't do it. And when you do it at a national level, they will call you out. They will. Fit. We see all the evaluations. You don't get to say this guy was lying. He was bullshit. He used somebody else's pictures. We call them carpet baggers. We've been calling them a long time. People that submit articles or classes, that's other people's stuff. Now we have software that tells us, oh, he took that from Scott Thompson. He took that from, you know, Eddie or whatever from Saul Kralaski. But there's times I've looked on, this ain't his stuff. This ain't his stuff. Now, sometimes somebody's got a fresh approach to an older topic. That's what we're looking for. You know, there's never been just one ventilation class. There's a lot of different ideas, tools, things. like. Or once in a while, it's just time to revisit something again. It's been 20 years or whatever. But you're right, Scott. That's probably most pick a topic you're very, very familiar with. I look at that. Then the other thing I told you we looked at before is, have we published it? When you when Scott Thompson, firefighter Scott Thompson says, I submitted an article on, uh, uh, you know, your, your tools, you know, the right tools, carry tools, proper maintenance, rapid tools, all that stuff, the stuff, the, the nuts and bolts of Halligans and, you know, which is a big time class for the fire service. You want to be proud of what, have ownership with your tools. You want to be what Curtis Burt was when he was a firefighter for, you know, that kind of guy who's now doing great things, all right? You know, when you see that, you go, well, actually, that's you know, when you read his description, and actually, this is based on an article that was published in Fire Engineering in March of what I'm like. It's like when you're interviewing somebody, Scott, for firefighter, and they say they're a veteran. They go right up to the top usually, okay? If they're, they've they served in the armed forces, less than 1%, they go, you have an article. And it doesn't matter if it's the web, because this is the thing guys don't get, Scott. There's Fire Engineering Magazine, the hard copy. There's fireengineering.com, the website. There's gems if it's an EMS. We Bobby redid that where it's it back to the Journal of Emergency Medical Services. There's there's fire apparatus, which is not just fire apparatus. It's anything that goes inside a firehouse, clean the firehouse, and all the equipment, the tools, the exhaust system, everything, like not just fire engines and stuff. And then you got Firefighter Nation. And you've got, I mean, it goes on and on and on. There's so many places to get published. Published is published, folks. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be in, look, it's nice to get one in the hard copy. But sometimes, depending on what your topic is, it gets more views on the web. You know, you have to look at it. Work to get it published. Know your stuff organized. And, and you said something, Scott, I want to go back to. Stay on topic. You know, I, I, I review some after a while. And once in a while, I just go, well, it, it looks good. I don't know him or her. It looks like it could be a good program as long as it. And then we get chased out the hallway. You know, I just wasted an hour, 45 minutes of my time, Chief. This guy said he was going to cover this. That's nothing. He didn't, I go, do your evaluation, man. He'll, he'll be a no-fly next time at FDIC. Don't bash vendors. The quickest way to get booted out of the FDIC permanently is if you get up there and you bitch about a particular apparatus manufacturer and they're one of our gold or diamond, you don't do that. You know, you could talk about the differences between a straight stick and a mid-mount and a front load, you know, blah, 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 and this different stuff. But you don't get into attacking different air packs. And don't, yeah, guys get a little all lippy when they get in there, a little full of themselves. I'm like, oh, the moment that happens, 
That's yeah. they take your sign and you're a no fly. You know, here's the other thing too, Scott, and this is what I what what I was told by Diane Feldman in 1994. Uh, now Diane Rothschild, um, and I told Eddie, it's a big fire service. Write for the whole fire service. Teach for the whole fire service. Tell, you said it, tell your story. Tell your story, your experience, your reason, right? And then it goes back to Instructor One, Scott, for your program and even your articles. What I did pay attention to when I took Instructor One until I started teaching Instructor One is the intro body conclusion. Intro your program or intro your article, hook them, hook them right from the beginning. Then give them the meat in the middle and then summarize your conclusion and hook them again. There's guys, Scott, that leave like you dangling. It's like, is that it? I, you see people just close out their class and you're like, did he run out of, no, he's got plenty of time. Is this it? It's over? You didn't, you didn't remind me why I'm here, you know, so – it's one thing to be passionate about what you want to do. It's another thing to be organized. And, and one of the last things I'll say, Scott, you've seen this. Don't write an article or come teach a class to attack your department or someone else's department. I've seen guys, you've seen it where they come in and go, so first thing I had was I had a chief that just said, this chief, and, and it's their way of getting back at their chief. And then we hear about that. Chiefs will write calls to say, oh, really? You let one of my guys stand up there and bitch about me. Yet he's the problem. We're not the problem. And, you know, so don't use as a platform to pitch your political agenda or what you're late. Like I said, the cancers out there, the fire service, the ones that beat up their own fire departments, you know, <laughs> look, if you got a shit old fire department, then work to fix it. All right. But you don't yeah, attack, your own, you don't attack your own family. But no. I mean, so being organized, showing up on time. How about handouts? Have a handout for them. FDIC is a fire department instructors conference international. You, what the, what's the takeaway? What are they going to leave? You, they go to the functional fire company. They are leaving with a ton of information about that very topic and more. I mean, you want to figure out how to your game plan, your value system. Let's start at the very beginning. What it takes to do, be a damn good firefighter, let alone you know the whole process, the whole department. That's why they go to your class. And they get something. They leave with something from, from Chief Scott Thompson. You know what I'm saying? Our, you know, so having that, reference the articles. If you fit it, you know, you finish on time, go out in the hallway, you know, get up. There's another guy waiting to teach in five minutes. Get your stuff, get out of the hallway, talk to people out there, or save enough time for questions of people coming up and so on and so forth. Um, you know, you Rick, one of the things I probably is, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, you know, I, I've been going back every year since, and, and you try different things, but it's the balancing being entertaining versus giving quality information. You know, a couple of years I got sucked into the, the videos and the jokes, and, and, you know, I'd have somebody come up afterwards and go, you know, oh, I went to your class. What do you remember? And they remember a joke I told and not anything about the content. So I've really, you know, that's another thing. You can, you want to be entertaining. You want to hold their attention, but they're not there to see a vaudeville show. They, they want to leave with some content, some instructional uh, content to, to help them or their organization be a little bit better. And I think, you know, that's sometimes I see they, they worry so hard to be liked that they miss the opportunity to give good information. That, that's a great point. I used to say, stop trying to be Alan Brunacini because Bruno was one of the funniest people you met. But, but it was natural. He didn't have to try. He just, that's just and the way he, he was. It was. Yeah, it was connected. So that's a great point. Don't nobody wants a stand-up comic. They didn't come there for that. They go to the bars and see that stuff. They want to know <laughs> what are you going to give them. That's a great point, Scott. You know, <clears throat> again, it's knowing your material, getting up there. You know, I, you said it before. Practice it beforehand. When I when I see, have you ever taught this topic before? No. Have you ever taught at the IC? No. And I'm like, unless it's something, I go, oh my god, this, <clears throat> this, this. This guy, this this young Scott Thompson, I know this guy. This is a great program. He's talked about it. We need to give him a shot. But really, if you don't, you're going to come to the biggest show on earth and you're going to beta test it. Well, I have to say beta. What beta? Anyway, so you're going to you're going to test it there. Um, it ain't going to happen. You know, I want to see, like you said, I taught it at the Illinois Fire Chiefs or Texas Fire Chiefs Conference. I taught it, you know, 
for the colony training days. And I taught it here, this and that. So, because then I could pick up the phone and call, hey, Scott, oh, God, the kid was dynamite. Or you go, yeah, you know, I don't think he's ready for FDIC. And I, I'm like, okay, good. I need to hear that. Um, like you said, get out there, teach it, know your topic, reference anybody's material you use, just like you would a college paper with your citations. You know, I mean, I'm with CSU and, you know, I look for that stuff all the time is, you know, the carpet baggers out there. Make sure you give credit. If you want to, if you want to talk about <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a quote <coughs> from Scott Thompson's Functional Fire Company book, yeah, don't become his book. Don't teach his class for him. Like some guys used to go, they used to do a whole class in Alan Brunacini. I'm like, no. But you say, you know, I, you, know, I, you know, I sat through Chief Scott Thompson's class of Functional Fire Company, whatever, all your classes. I'm just picking the night one because right. it's the best on the book. Right. Anyway, that being said, and they say, and he brought up a great point about this, 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 and man, he is right on. You know, and that doesn't hurt your credibility at all to do that. It, it, it increases your credibility that, that you can do that. But yeah, I think people sometimes think that everything that has to come out of their mouth has to be original. And we know that that's impossible. Well, so if that was true, nobody would be quoting Patton. Right, nobody would be right. quoting Abraham Lincoln, Vince Lombardi, Colin Powell. You know what I'm saying? Well, don't 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 quote any of them. No, we people quote them all the time. Just give credit. Put their name with it or whatever. But am I missing anything? I did a thing for Diane about how to submit your stuff, both articles and, and classes. Um, oh, hit the deadline. I have chiefs. I had a chief. We were we were done three months, four months. Classes were selected. Classrooms were set. And he goes, I need you to help me get this class put in there. I'm like, you know, we picked them in June, and we already had our meeting in August, and it's already set. So I'm going to tell Scott Thompson, hey, Scott, you know, I know we told you yes already, but because this chief was late – we're going to knock you out of your because there's only so many classrooms. There's yeah. always you, you can't be you can't be out on the sidewalk, you know, cranking a music box. Go listen to me talk out here. There's so many classes that are, and there are classrooms. Yeah, you, you got opening ceremonies both days, and then the different stuff. And there's breaks. And there's I mean, you got to. Got, well, yeah. I'll say this: Chief David Rhodes, our boss, and Diane Rothschild and their team, their team is doing phenomenal. It's you know, Bobby has got to be smiling down from heaven. Everything he wanted, we talked about this. Everything he wanted, Scott, for for the whole for the whole company, not just FDI, for everything, is coming is coming true. The things he the talked about, amazing. the changes, the, the additions, are just the, the building on to what Bobby did and oh. Bill Mann did. It's amazing. It's the next generation of FDIC, oh. which you got to have. You got to have. David, it. Yeah, David's adding his touches. David, 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 first of all, David's one of the smartest dudes I know. And he's yeah. an incredible, incredible fireground commander. He smoked daddy with the Georgia Smoke Divers. You know, he was a battalion chief in Atlanta all those years, union president for 20 years. Logistics for years. He he should have a medal this big on his chest for being the union <laughs> president in Atlanta. Okay. David is phenomenal. But uh, any anything we missed before we close things out? Anything you can think about FDIC? No, I, no, I think we covered it, Rick. Just, you know, it's it's worth the effort. You know, don't be discouraged if you put in a couple times and you don't get it. You you, you gotta you gotta keep going and and talk to those people who have done it and uh, just be a master of your craft and it'll happen. Well, and I'm, that's what I miss. You brought that up. Uh, you know, not everybody gets to teach sometimes, and I had guy, a guy get so mad and he's like. I should be doing store fires. I go, no, John Norman does store fires. Yeah, but I should do store fires. Let me say it again. John Norman does store fires. But I go, don't say but again. He does store fires. Pick another topic. We're not going to say, oh, John, we're going to try, you know. And I had another guy, that when he didn't get picked, you see it. They get all snotty. Some are polite snotty. You know, I guess my time's over at FDIC, so I'll be teaching the class somewhere at the same time and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's the best way to get on the no-fly list at TSA or FDIC is, you know, and I know some guys, they had to wait three years, and they finally got it. And, you know, there's only so much. So be like Scott said, folks, be patient. Submit your stuff early. Make sure you do your due diligence. The, the deadline's in June. It's the middle of June every year. So FDIC is in April. You better be ready because come June, it's too late if you don't submit it by then. 
And it's well worth the wait because when you do get that acceptance, man, there's not another feeling like it. You, you get your shot, and then the work really begins. You got to deliver. Well, they've got some great packages now, Scott, for, for departments that send a bunch of people. That never used to happen really before. David's out there giving away free reg, uh, free uh, 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 passes uh, for those that can't afford it. He goes to other people's conferences and says, so who paid their own way here? Why don't you go? Because I can't afford FDIC, Chief. Okay, come on up here. And he holds a sign. You got a free pass. He's really working hard to, to bring all kinds of folks to FDIC. Uh, stop by. Uh, we'll be in the Columbia Southern booth, folks. Uh, CSU, I'm an alum. Hashtag CSU, I love them. Uh, we'll be in the Dingus Fire Booth with uh, Nick Dingus and, and Jeff Bryan. Uh, Scott and I will be, or uh, uh, John and I will be there Thursday at three o'clock signing books. We'll be signing books in their booth. We do it every year. Um, the radio booth. If you can't find us teaching, good chance we're in the, the speaker ready room at the book booth just hanging out. So, uh, yep. Scott, I appreciate you doing this. I'm so freaking excited, folks. If you're not there Wednesday for opening ceremonies, you're missing. Well, if you can't make it, it's going to be live. And when it's done being live, it's going to be posted and posted and posted. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be at FDIC.com and Fire Engineering. You're not going to want to miss. You're not going to want to miss Chief Thompson's keynote. So I'm just so proud of you, buddy. Thank you for your help and support. And, and, and you know, that's that's a big part of why this happened is you taught me a lot of things and mentored me. So thank you. Thank you. People did it for me, and I can't wait. I'm, I, like I said, I don't know who I'm more excited for, for you or the people in the audience. So, <laughs> Hey, Scott, if they want to get a hold of you, best email. Scott at fireserviceleadership.com is the best way to do it, and I'll get you whatever I can. I'm a little bit of a procrastinator right now, focused on this this uh, this speech, so uh, nag me a little, but I'll get it to you. <laughs> Scott's one of the best follow-up guys I know, so just hit him what you're looking for. Chief Snelka will be back with us uh, now. Next month, um, we're probably we're skipping it because our third week, our third Wednesday ends. It hits right in the middle of FDIC, so we'll probably be just be joining you uh, May fifteenth of our next show. Um, uh, Chief McGrath will be back with us, um, uh, so that's our next show day. Be May fifteenth. Catch us at FDIC. We'll be doing stuff live there. Um, we're all on social media. You can head over and catch us there. Fire Engineering always has some great hangouts on Wednesdays. Some great podcasts in the evenings, and Mark even expanded them to the weekends now. So Saturdays and Sundays, you'll get to listen to some great podcasts as well at fireengineering.com. Um, just go to that website if you want to see what's happening. And in closing, I know Scott's very passionate about our veterans, all right, being a dad. Uh, when, yeah. In closing, we always ask you to please keep the men and women serving armed forces in your thoughts and prayers. And remember, never forgetting means just that, never forgetting. Be safe. We'll see you at FDIC, and God bless you.